Welcome to Force 13's countdown of the 100 most notable tropical cyclones in recorded history as part of this year's Hurricane Week. Storm number 100 is an Atlantic hurricane that formed and intensified into a hurricane in a particularly strange area and was the first storm to make landfall in Spain in over 160 years. This, of course, was Hurricane Vince. Vince was the 21st named storm and 12th hurricane of the hyperactive 2005 season and formed in early October. Initially, Vince became subtropical before turning tropical and reaching its peak intensity at 75 miles per hour or 988 millibars in air pressure. Vince lost hurricane status quickly and moved over Spain as a tropical depression. At 99 is another Atlantic storm, and not only did it form in the month of March, but it also reached hurricane strength. This is Hurricane 1, way back in 1908. Storm 1 formed in the open Atlantic and began to track south-southwest in early March. The storm intensified into a hurricane and eventually topped out at winds of 100 miles per hour as it bore down on the Leeward Islands. The islands escaped relatively unscathed, with some buildings reporting damage. Hurricane 1 then steadily weakened and was last seen north of Venezuela. Storm number 98 is a cyclone that tracked over almost the whole of the northern Australian coast in 2000 and is the only storm recorded to make four landfalls in Australia. This is Cyclone Steve. Cyclone Steve was named in the Coral Sea as it tracked towards Australia. The storm made landfall near Cairns, Queensland, causing record flooding in some areas and wind gusts of over 80 miles per hour. The storm weakened over land before intensifying in the Gulf of Carpentaria. Steve made a second landfall in the Northern Territory, downing trees and causing some flooding. The storm then stayed inland for four days before emerging near Broome in Western Australia. The storm reached peak intensity of 75 miles per hour with an air pressure of 975 millibars before making two more landfalls in Western Australia, causing major flooding and the storm's retirement. At 97 is one of only two Atlantic storms known to span two calendar years, or in other words, be active over the new year. This is Hurricane Alice of 1954. Alice formed in the open Atlantic and began to move southwestward towards the Leeward Islands. On January 1, 1955, Alice became a hurricane and maintained Category 1 status as it moved past the islands, with the most notable effects being reported on the islands of St. Barthélemy and Saba. Anguilla was also significantly affected with hundreds of buildings damaged and over half a million dollars in total damages. Storm 96 is a cyclone that affected Western Australia in 1999, causing a wind gust of 166 miles per hour near Exmouth. This was Cyclone Vance. Vance formed in the Timor Sea, and after clipping northern Australia as a depression, the storm moved west and then began to intensify. The storm topped out at 145 mile per hour winds up until landfall in Western Australia near Exmouth, which was affected by storm surge, beach erosion and wind, in which over 100 homes were damaged. At 95 is a storm that took a track's and intensity that was similar to Vance and resulted in setting the record for the highest non-tornadic wind speed measured in the world. 
This was Cyclone Olivia. Cyclone Olivia started out north of Darwin, Australia in early April 1996. The storm moved in a generally southwesterly direction and slowly intensified, eventually developing hurricane force winds by April the 8th. From here, the storm slowed and changed direction, turning southward and finally southeastward as a Category 4 storm before making landfall near Exmouth. Storm number 94 is an Atlantic hurricane that is still known for being the longest tracking Atlantic storm and is a record that has stood for 46 years now. This was Hurricane Faith of 1966. Hurricane Faith originated to the southeast of the Cape Verde Islands and moved westward across the Atlantic, intensifying to reach Category 2 status before weakening as it passed the Leeward Islands. The storm slowed down to the northeast of the Turks and Caicos Islands and intensified to reach its peak as a high-end Category 3 storm. The hurricane managed to maintain tropical characteristics all the way until passing the Faroe Islands where it finally became extratropical. At 93 is another storm that tracked to an unlikely location, but this time in the Pacific. This storm made landfall in California way back in 1858 and was known as the San Diego Hurricane. The actual track isn't known for this storm, but it is known that the storm moved north or northeast and made its closest approach to Southern California as a Category 1 hurricane. The storm washed ashore a number of boats and caused significant agricultural damage. The San Diego hurricane remains the only hurricane to ever strike California. Storm 92 happens to be the most intense cyclone ever recorded in the southern hemisphere. The storm bottomed out at 890 millibars with winds of 180 miles per hour. This was Cyclone Zoe. Cyclone Zoe formed east of Tuvalu and proceeded to head west-southwest towards Vanuatu, reaching Category 5 status in the process and subsequently becoming the most intense storm ever recorded in the Southern Hemisphere with an air pressure of 890 millibars. It caused complete destruction on the tiny island of Tikopia, but elsewhere damage was light. At 91 it is another very intense storm, this time the most intense recorded in the Australian region. The storm formed in April 2003 and affected Indonesia and Australia. This storm was Cyclone Inigo. Cyclone Inigo formed near the Indonesian island of Yamdina and skirted the north coast of Timor as a tropical depression. The system became a tropical storm whilst passing the island of Sumba and after a day or so began its intensification to become one of the most intense storms recorded in that region. After a bend southwards, then southeastwards, the storm finally made landfall in the Pilbara region in Western Australia. Most of the storm's effects were felt in Indonesia, where flooding and heavy rainfall caused 58 fatalities, 102 injuries and over 150 heavily damaged or destroyed houses.
Storm 90 was the strongest storm of the 1997 Pacific hurricane season and also happens to be the most intense Pacific hurricane on record. With a pressure of 902 millibars, this storm was Hurricane Linda. Linda formed south of Mexico and began to move northeastward. On September the 11th, the storm became a hurricane and began to explosively intensify to become a Category 5 storm by the next day. Reaching winds of 185 miles per hour and an air pressure of 902 millibars, Linda became the strongest eastern Pacific storm on record. Whilst the storm didn't come close to a landfall, Linda caused $3 million of damage in California when it caused landslides and flooding that damaged over 75 houses. At 89 is a storm that intensified at a near record pace, including a drop in pressure of over 90 millibars in a day. This was Typhoon Forest. Typhoon Forest began as a tropical depression south of Guam on September the 20th and moved northwestwards. After gradual intensification, the storm underwent a near record intensification on September the 23rd, dropping 90 millibars of pressure in the space of less than a day. The storm eventually began to weaken, but still managed to cause typhoon force winds on Okinawa Island before making landfall on the island of Kyushu as a minimal typhoon, before weakening. Forests killed up to 38 and caused flooding and landslides in Japan. Storm number 88, whilst weak, was an almost unprecedented Pacific storm in that it was the only storm to make landfall in California in the 20th century. This was the California storm of 1939. Like the San Diego hurricane we covered earlier, we don't know specifically the characteristics of this storm, only that it moved west-northwest from near the coast of Central America and before turning north and striking California as a weakening storm of borderline hurricane intensity. Flooding resulted and up to 93 unprepared Californians died due to the rare landfall. At 87 is a very rare storm in that it was assigned three names throughout its lifetime. The system was active for a whole seven weeks as it erratically travelled around the South Pacific, across Australia and into the southern Indian Ocean. This was Cyclone Katrina Victor Cindy. This storm became a tropical depression on the first day of 1998 to the east of North Queensland, Australia. The storm then moved in an easterly direction before turning southwards just south of the Solomon Islands. Here it became a Category 1 equivalent storm and moved towards Vanuatu. The storm did a U-turn and headed back westward as a Category 2 storm and moved back to the other side of the Coral Sea. After meandering and fluctuating in strength, the storm finally moved towards the northern tip of Australia before becoming a remnant low. The storm regenerated off the northern Australian coast and eventually reached Category 2 intensity once again, before finally dying out over the Indian Ocean on February the 19th. Some islands reported major damage from the storm, but apart from that, not much in the way of effects.
Storm 86 is another storm that took a strange track, this time because it made landfall in Madagascar three times. Forming in late January 2004, this was Cyclone Elita. Elita formed on January the 25th to the west of Madagascar and became a tropical storm just offshore before heading north. The system curved back south eastwards into a landfall on Bombitoka Bay, in which the storm weakened back to a tropical depression before reaching the other side of the country. However, the storm hooked back into the island and pushed back through to the western side. After stalling offshore, the storm reached hurricane force winds and made its final and strongest landfall near Moandava. The effects of Alita were considerable in both Madagascar and Mozambique, destroying thousands of buildings, causing major agricultural damage and killing 33. At 85 was a strong Category 5 storm in the Pacific Ocean. This storm lasted a whole 31 days as it travelled westward from the south of Mexico, past Hawaii and turning post-tropical in the northern central Pacific. This was Hurricane John of 1994. John formed to the south of Mexico and slowly progressed westwards as a tropical storm. It wasn't until the storm was midway between North America and Hawaii that it became a hurricane. Steady intensification began from here until the storm attained Category 5 status to the southeast of Hawaii. The storm weakened, re-strengthened and weakened once more as it passed over the international dateline. After swinging eastward, then westward, then back east, the storm passed back over into the central Pacific, where it re-intensified into a hurricane for a brief period. From here, the storm finally became extratropical after a record 31 days of being active. Storm 84 is another South Pacific storm that took a strange track, reaching Category 4 intensity twice in its 24-day lifetime. This storm was Cyclone Wiwa. Wiwa started out southeast of Nauru before curving southwards then westwards, attaining hurricane force winds south of the Solomon Islands. The storm moved south and attained its peak intensity of 145 mph per hour winds in the Coral Sea. The storm gradually weakened and turned eastward before making landfall on New Caledonia as a tropical storm. The storm moved north and then northwest as a depression and the intensification process began again once the storm performed a U-turn near Papua New Guinea. Again over the Coral Sea, the storm reached its peak intensity for a second time before paralleling the Australian coast as a weakening tropical storm. We were caused landslides in New Caledonia, flooding in Papua New Guinea and heavy rainfall along the Australian coast.
At 83 is a cyclone that is regarded as the worst to affect Samoa in over 100 years. Forming in January 1990, the storm moved in a southerly direction for most of its lifetime, becoming a Category 4 storm along the way. This was Cyclone Ofa. Cyclone Ofa began as a depression to the southeast of Tuvalu and almost completed a clockwise route before deciding to move in a southeasterly direction. The storm passed Samoa as a Category 3 storm, reaching its peak intensity of 130 miles per hour shortly afterwards. In Samoa, many buildings were destroyed and a third of trees were uprooted as a result of the storm. The storm resulted in eight fatalities. Storm 82 is a cyclone that slammed the northern coast of Australia as a Category 5 storm in April 2006, becoming the most intense storm in terms of wind speed to do so. This was Cyclone Monica. Monica formed off the tip of eastern Papua New Guinea and moved westward. Monica struck far north Queensland as a Category 2 storm. Weakening to a tropical storm, the storm emerged over the Gulf of Carpentaria and we intensified. Monica attained Category 5 status off the Northern Territory coast and maintained the intensity right up until landfall. At the time of landfall, the storm had 180 mile per hour sustained winds, but this dwindled quickly and within 12 hours the storm was only of tropical storm intensity. Over two thirds of the trees in the area were uprooted, but since the storm struck a sparsely populated area, there were no deaths as a result. Monica was rumoured to have reached an air pressure eclipsing that of record holder Typhoon Tip, but there is no evidence of this, and it is unlikely that this is the case. At 81 is an Atlantic storm that formed in mid-November and became a strong Category 4 hurricane, only bested by the Cuba hurricane of 1932. The storm is also notable for moving eastward across the Caribbean, one of very few, if any, to do so. This was Hurricane Lenny. Lenny formed south of the Cayman Islands and began to travel east-southeast, which is highly unusual for storms in that area. Lenny became a hurricane south of Jamaica and reached its first peak at Category 2 strength. Lenny went on to attain Category 4 status with winds of 155 miles per hour as it slowed down and stalled over the Leeward Islands, coming close to a landfall on St. Croix, landfalling on St. Martin and Anguilla, and causing hurricane conditions on neighbouring islands. Lenny caused moderate to heavy damage with 17 fatalities and damages of nearly $900 million. We've come to the end of the first 20 of Force 13's Top 100 Storms. Coming up is my secondary feature, a summary of all this year's Northern Hemisphere Storms, this part covering ones that formed between January and May. We begin with Tropical Depression 1W, which formed in the South China Sea in the Western Pacific, designated by the Joint Typhoon Warning Centre. Um, its total dam damages accounted to one million dollars and two fatalities because of flooding and landslides in the Philippines. The storm really didn't last very long, only a few hours, as a tropical depression reaching a peak wind speed of 35 miles per hour. The 
The second storm of the year was Typhoon Pekar, which formed on March the 29th in the South China Sea and became a typhoon before moving into Vietnam, making landfall there as a tropical storm. Pekar didn't cause much in the way of um, damage, but it did cause a nine fatalities in total, reaching a peak wind speed of 75 miles per hour and a minimum air pressure of 998 millibars. Then we had Tropical Storm Aletta, which formed in the um, Eastern Pacific, the first storm of the year there. It reached a peak wind speed of 50 miles per hour as a tropical storm and didn't affect any land areas, dissipating well before moving anywhere near the uh, Mexican coast there. Then we had Tropical Storm Alberto, the first storm of the Atlantic season this year, forming on May the 19th. It slowly moved south uh, westward and then curving back eastward as a tropical storm reaching a peak wind speed of 50 miles per hour and causing little to no effects on land. Hurricane Bud was the second storm in the Eastern Pacific and first hurricane and first major hurricane for that matter, reaching a wind speed of 115 miles per hour, skimming the Mexican coast as it weakened. It didn't cause much in the way of damage and didn't cause any fatalities. Moving on to Typhoon Sanvu, the next storm in the Western Pacific, forming on May the 21st. It became a typhoon out in the uh, Western Pacific as a 90 miles per hour storm and caused $20,000 in damage and no fatalities on the minor outlying islands in the Pacific there. Moving on to the second Atlantic storm of the season, forming as a subtropical storm in, on May the 26th, Tropical Storm Beryl became tropical just before making landfall in northern Florida and then weakening to a depression before finally dissipating on May the 30th. At the end of Hurricane Week, I'll be answering any questions that you, the viewer, may have submitted during this week. If you have a question, just comment below this video. For those of you watching these as I upload them, part two will be up tomorrow. If not, part two should be around here somewhere.